Is it better? Dramatically better. You see this huge spike in GLP-1 with the plant-based meal. Okay, what's the difference? Well, your body appears to be looking not just for the fact that you put something in your digestive tract, but for a certain kind of thing, certain foods that are high in fiber, for example, or foods that are high in complex carbohydrate. Well, I mention these because how much fiber or complex carbohydrate is there in a McDonald's sandwich? Well, not really any. I mean, not, not in the meat, not in the cheese. Uh, the bun is white bread, um, so it doesn't have the fiber. Okay, um, well, you will get full on a McDonald's sandwich. I mean, you can get full on anything. I mean, if you eat it eventually, your stomach stretch will kick in and pain will make you stop eating. But pain should not be the ind indication that we have had adequate nutrition. Um, if GLP-1 is released in adequate amounts during the meal, you will stop eating before the point of pain. That's important because, because having a defective appetite switch will drive you to overeat and lead you toward obesity. Turning it back on requires using the right pentagram. Okay, you with me? All right, and there's another thing. Um, you, now you know this already. How many calories are there in a gram of fat? How many? Nine, that's right. How many calories are there in a gram of carbohydrate? Well, there's only four. Uh, fiber, about zero to two, depending on, on the type but very, very low or, or more or less no calories and fiber for all practical purposes. So what this means is if I'm eating fatty foods, I will fill up eventually. But by the time I've filled up, I've taken in a lot of calories. If I ate complex carbohydrate or high fiber foods, by the time I fill up, I haven't taken in so many calories. Our research team put this to the test by testing a Mediterranean diet. A Mediterranean diet is a healthier diet than what most people are eating. But it's not a plant-based diet entirely. Um, it has fish in it. It's got chicken in it. It's got some red meat. It's got some dairy products. It's got oils, maybe a lot of oil. And okay, I know what you're thinking. Oil, fat, nine calories per gram, right. Fish, fish oil, nine calories per gram, right. Um, we compared a Mediterranean diet to a low-fat vegan diet. We brought in 62 people who wanted to lose weight. And half of them were asked to go on the Mediterranean diet and half went vegan. After 16 weeks, everybody switched to the opposite diet compared to the one they were assigned to. So the Mediterranean group went vegan, the vegan group went Mediterranean. All right, let me show you what we found. Okay, so the Mediterranean group starts off and they're thinking, what an indulgent, wonderful diet. This is so great. I get to eat fish and I get to eat olive oil and all this stuff. But when does the weight loss really kick in? Well, they didn't really lose very much weight. Now the vegans, they were kind of nervous about this because they thought they might have to acquire a taste for folk music to go, <laughs> just kidding. Um, a vegan diet does not require you to change your culture in any way. It doesn't require you to wear tie dyed clothes even. Um, and the vegan food was really appealing and people lost weight like crazy. It worked. It caused tremendous significant weight loss. After 16 weeks, we asked everybody to switch to the opposite diet. They took four weeks off and then began the opposite diet. And the Mediterranean group now began vegan. And suddenly they said, this is what I came to the study for. They started losing weight. And the people who had been vegan and now began the Mediterranean diet started to regain their lost weight. And frankly, they were angry about it. And they said, wait a minute, I've lost my taste for chicken wings. I don't feel a need for oily stuff of any kind. I don't care if it's extra virgin or not. Like, leave it off. I don't want all that oily glop on my food. And they were putting it on weight. Why? Because carbohydrate has four calories per gram, but fat, whether it's chicken fat, fish fat, or extra virgin olive oil in a bottle straight from Tuscany that cost you 45 bucks, it still has nine calories per gram because it's fat. Okay, so the point being that an appetite turnoff switch can be activated by foods that are high in fiber and high in complex carbohydrate. And it can be defeated by high fat foods. Yeah, a Mediterranean diet really does not cause weight loss uh, unless you add a calorie cutting measure to it. Um, they just don't eat normal portions. Uh, okay, the second, second um, point is calorie trapping. We've talked about appetite taming, but calorie trapping is this. 
you got f high fiber foods that you eat. When in your digestive tract, the fiber breaks apart because you chewed it all up. And it's now a million little sponges going down your digestive tract. And the fiber, like a sponge, is picking up unabsorbed calories. And those unabsorbed calories can't escape the fiber. The fiber just carries it out with the waste. Yes, it does. It goes along your digestive tract and you literally flush it down the toilet. That's right. Now, the high fiber foods are grains. A little bit better are fruits. A little bit better than that are vegetables and the fiber champions of all are the legumes, beans, peas, lentils. They have lots and lots of fiber in them. Um, so researchers at Tufts University, which is really one of the great research nutrition research centers in the country, did an amazing study. Brought in 90 people. Half of them, they said, white bread. The other half, whole grain breads. And they, over six weeks, did an amazing thing. In fact, they did something that my research team is never going to do. They collected stool samples from everybody. And they kind of analyzed them, I shall say, for unabsorbed calories. And what they found is that the whole grains were good for about losing about 100 calories. So they trapped and burned 100 calories that they weren't otherwise going to. So high fiber foods can be delicious foods. Uh, it, it can be brown bread, it can be whole grain bread, but there's so many other things that it can be. Um, and they can be made into main dishes and side dishes and desserts and appetizers and all these wonderful, wonderful foods. So that's calorie trapping, it comes from the fiber. All right, so metabolism boosting, this is the third, third thing. And to demonstrate this, let me ask you this question that I'm sure you've been, been mulling about for some time. And what is the difference between you and a crocodile? What do you think? Look at that placid face. What's the difference? Can you think of anything? Oh, I'm sure you can come up with one difference. Ah, how about this? To get warm, that chili crocodile needs to lie in the sun. It needs to find a nice rock or a sandy beach and just lie there and let the sun warm her body up. That's true of all lizards. That's true of, uh, of a turtle. That's true of a chameleon. That's true of a snake. John, um, did, did Dr. Neil Bernard freeze? Sorry, can you hear me okay? I, um, can you hear me all right? I'm yes, yes, we hear you. We hear you. Okay, very good. I, I, I'm guessing that my crocodile must have upset the, the tech gods of the world, so I apologize for that. Um, let's go on. Okay, here is the difference between, between you and a crocodile. The crocodile is cold-blooded and cannot create body heat. That's why they have to lie in the sun. You are not cold-blooded. You are warm-blooded. What that means is that you can create body heat. How do you do it? You can turn food into body heat. And when you do, you, the food does not go to body fat. Ah, that's right. You can eat a lot of food. You can turn it into body heat. You can't absorb any of it as calories. Okay. Um, let me show you how this works. You sit down. I come into my research center. Uh, I'll put you down in, in, in a chair. And we'll take a mask. And you cover your nose and mouth with this mask. You're going to feel like an astronaut. And then uh, what I'm doing with this mask is I'm measuring your oxygen intake and carbon dioxide output. And what we discover is what your metabolic rate is. It's really easy for us to calculate. Now I'm going to give you a test meal. And after you eat the meal, you start absorbing the nutrients and the nutrients start giving you an after meal calorie burn. You're burning calories faster after the meal and you're burning calories about three hours or, or maybe a little bit longer than that, uh, faster. You're burning them faster for three or four hours after the meal. Now, uh, the problem is that not all foods will do this. Uh, let me give you a pat of butter. Let me give you two pats of butter. Let me give you the whole darn stick of butter and butter gives you no burn. It doesn't do anything. Really, like nothing happens. Um, 
the fats you eat are absorbed in the first 40 centimeters or so of your digestive tract. And you don't, I mean, nothing really happens. It slides into body fat. 